Johnny Talk Sports in with my week 16 NFL predictions. And last week I went a really impressive 15 and 1. The only game I missed was the Cardinals and Lions. I really thought the Cardinals were going to absolutely dismantle the Lions. But that was not the case. And in these last couple of weeks, the last two weeks, I have been a very impressive 29-3. and three. Only three more weeks left in the regular season. And nearly every team in the league, except for about four or five teams, are still somewhat in the playoff hunt. So it's going to be a tight race to the finish. And with only three weeks left, every game is going to matter. So without further ado, let's get to my week 16 NFL predictions. Kicking things off with the 49ers and the Titans. And this is a tale of two different teams. The 49ers, they struggled to begin the year. And they have gotten healthier. Players are coming back from injury. While the Titans, they started off really strong this season. Despite losing in week one of the Cardinals, the Titans, they were going really strong until they were decimated with injuries. Derrick Henry goes down. A.J. Brown goes down. Julio Jones has been ineffective whenever he's in the lineup for the Titans. So I am going to go with the team that I feel like has been the better team in recent weeks, and that is San Francisco. Because with the 49ers, they still have a couple injuries to deal with, especially with running back Elijah Mitchell. Jeff Wilson, he really stepped up last week for the 49ers against Atlanta. And I think San Francisco, they go on the road, they win this game by about a touchdown. George Kittle has been hot since coming back off the IR. A touchdown in all but two games since being activated off the IR. And Debo Samuel has turned into a Cordell Patterson type of receiver slash running back. He's basically Mr. Versatility for the 49ers. So I'm going with San Francisco in this one. The Titans, I just don't know. They seem to beat good teams, but they lose to bad ones. But with the way that their offense has been without Derrick Henry, I don't know. But I'm going with the 49ers. But I think this one is that one game this week that goes either way. We have a couple Christmas Day games. Browns, Packers. The Browns, they are coming off of less rest as what they're anticipating because their game was supposed to be on Saturday last week, but the CVID 1-9 got to them. It got to 18 Browns players. And the Browns, they should be close, if not at their full strength for this matchup against the Packers on Saturday. And for the Packers, it's that time of the year again. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, they have the number one seed. They control their own destiny for that number one seed. The NFC playoffs would go right through Lambeau. And Aaron Rodgers is one touchdown pass away from breaking Brett Favre's all-time record for most touchdown passes in Packers history. And there is no doubt in my mind that he will get that. I anticipate that Aaron Rodgers throws probably three touchdown passes at the minimum. One will probably go to Devontae Adams. However, the Browns' defense, they really held their own last week against the Raiders. But the Raiders are a much different animal than Green Bay. And I think Green Bay wins this matchup by at least 14 points. Even with the Browns coming back too close to, if not full strength, it's just hard to pick against Aaron Rodgers and the Packers this late in the year. The second of the Christmas Day games, Indianapolis and Arizona. And Arizona is on a losing streak. And it was talked about pretty early on in the year that the Cardinals, 
they were a legitimate contender, but they haven't been playing like it. I mean, James Conner is banged up right now. Chase Edmonds came back off the IR last week, but he wasn't that productive. DeAndre Hopkins is out for the remainder of the at least the regular season, but we'll see if he can come back for the playoffs. But this NFC West lead, it is shrinking for the Cardinals. And I feel like the Cardinals, they have to win this game, in my opinion, if they're going to win that NFC West. Because right now, the Rams are starting to figure things out after going on a bit of a losing streak. So, it's getting away from them. And they just gave up over 100 rushing yards to Craig Reynolds last week. And I believe Craig Reynolds is the Lions' maybe fifth string running back. So, he's their RB5. And I can only imagine what the Cardinals' defense is going to give up to Jonathan Taylor, who is leading the league in rushing yards. And he is in consideration for MVP, and in my opinion, should be the league MVP. And I think I think it's about time that we give the MVP to a running back. I feel like if Jonathan Taylor can end the season with 2,000 rushing yards, I think he deserves MVP. And there is three games left for him, and I think it's pretty manageable for him to get it done with what he has left. If Jonathan Taylor can rush for at least 110 rushing yards this week, I think he can get there because his remaining games after that are the Raiders and the Jaguars. And this game right now is basically a pick 'em. So Vegas has this going either way, but I'm going to pick Indianapolis because with the way the Cardinals defense has been, it's just hard to trust them at this point. And if they're going to get blown out by the Lions, they're going to give up a bunch of rushing yards to Craig Reynolds, who was probably running back five a couple weeks ago, if he was even on the 53-man roster a couple weeks ago. What are they going to give up to leading rusher Jonathan Taylor? So I'm going with Indy. Next, we have Lions-Falcons. And as mentioned a moment ago, the Lions are coming off of a big win against the Cardinals. While the Falcons, they got an absolute beat down by the 49ers, which I'm not surprised by it, but based off of recent history, the Falcons have done late in the year with playing teams really close. A little bit of a surprise, but I'm not surprised they gave a bunch of rushing yards to Jeff Wilson Jr. And I can only imagine what they're going to do this week, whether or not DeAndre Swift is going to come back, which I really don't think so. I think it's best for Detroit to shut down DeAndre Swift for the year. Whoever is leading the backfield for the Lions is going to have an absolute feast on Sunday against this Falcons defense. Because the Falcons defense, there really isn't any talent on this Falcons defense except for A.J. Terrell and maybe Grady Jarrett, and that's about it. But I'm going to pick the Falcons to win this game because there's always that one game per season where the Falcons, maybe even a couple games throughout the year, where the Falcons look like they have an explosive offense. And I think that's going to be this one. Because with the Lions coming off of an emotional win, sometimes when we see that, when teams are coming off of huge upset wins or emotional wins, they seem to play flat the next game. And I think that is going to be an ideal game for the Lions. So I am picking Atlanta. Moving on to Baltimore and Cincinnati. Lamar Jackson expected to be back this week. Last week, Tyler Huntley had a big performance last week as the Ravens suffered another heartbreaking loss to the Packers this week. As once again, the Ravens had a chance to play for overtime, but they went for two instead and they missed it once again. So the Ravens, they potentially have cost themselves a couple wins already. And with how tight the playoff race is for both the AFC and NFC, it begs the question, will those choices, will it come back to hurt the Ravens in the end? I think it just might. Especially against the Bengals this week, the Ravens defense hasn't been that good all season long. And Joe Burrow absolutely picked apart the Ravens defense earlier in the year. 
And even with Lamar Jackson being back this week, it's unknown how effective he's really going to be. Even if it is Tyler Huntley, who had a big performance last week against the Packers. I just think this Bengals defense is really underrated. And I think it really gets overshadowed with the talent on offense like Jamar Chase and Joe Mixon. I think it gets overshadowed. And with how Joe Burrow has been doing this season. Because Joe Burrow has been doing really well for the Bengals. As the Bengals right now, they are in playoff contention. And in my opinion, I think they're the team of the year. With what they have done this season, they have they have exceeded preseason expectations. I'm going to go with the Bengals to sweep the Ravens this season. As, as the later on we get in the year, those decisions by John Harbaugh to go for two at the end of games, coming back to haunt them. Because the Ravens, they're just desperate with injuries at this point. Rams, Vikings, and before I say anything about this game, before I get to a prediction, I'm going to say this. I guarantee that this will be a high-scoring affair. Whatever the over-under is, take the over, because there is no doubt in my mind that the over is going to hit. Because this game features the top two leaders in receiving yards this season in Cooper Cup and Justin Jefferson. And Kirk Cousins has done phenomenal this season. I don't care what any critic about Kirk Cousins says. Because Kirk Cousins, he has played his heart out this season. And I think this season has shown that Kirk Cousins, underappreciated quarterback in the league. Maybe not a top 10 QB, but I think definitely a top 15 QB. And I think this is the game of the week. So I think this is the biggest game the NFL has this week, even though we have Bill's Patriots, which I will talk about next. The Vikings right now, they are hanging on by a thread in this wild card race. So they are right in the mix. But they have a really tough schedule to end the year, starting this week with the Rams. And they play the Packers next week which they have beaten the Packers earlier this season, but I still like the Packers' consistency. But we'll see how this game goes for the Vikings. But I'm just going to go with the Rams because they have been the hotter team as of late. At least I feel like they have been. Because the Rams, they were struggling at one point, but then they seem to get things figured out. Right now they're on a winning streak. And I know that... They're not playing the biggest opponents, but a winning streak is a winning streak, and that's what you need when you're trying to get tuned up for the playoffs. And right now, the Cardinals are struggling. The Rams can still win the NFC West. Next, we have what is, according to records, the game of the week between the Bills and Patriots, as this is for the lead in the AFC East. And we saw this matchup a couple weeks ago on Monday Night Football where the Patriots won a low-scoring game where Mac Jones only threw the ball three times. Which, given the weather conditions, that was kind of expected to have a low-scoring game like that. Not many field goal attempts, not many extra point attempts, a low-scoring game. But this time, I think the conditions will be more in the Bills' favor, in my opinion, because the Patriots, the weather in that game for Monday Night Football a few weeks ago, it favored New England. And if you take out that long Damien Harris run in the beginning of that game, the Bills, they played near perfect defense that night. It was just the offense couldn't get things going. And I think the big matchup within the matchup is Stephon Diggs versus J.C. Jackson. Because Stephon Diggs, he has a history of having big games against New England. So that is going to be something to watch for in that matchup. But there's going to be a lot more points scored in this game this time around. And I think the Bills, they get the win this time. 
unless we see it start to snowstorm again in Foxborough for this matchup on Sunday, I think the Bills win this one. But if we see some awful weather conditions pop up, then I would take New England. But it's Buffalo for me. Next, we have the Jaguars and the Jets in a game where I unfortunately have to pick somebody to win. And I really don't want to, but I will because I predict every game. So I'm going to go with who I have been more impressed with this season. And that is the Jets for me because they have wins over the Titans and the Bengals. And I think that is pretty impressive to me compared to what the Jaguars have done this season. Well, the Jaguars... Well, they fire Urban Meyer midseason after the loads of turmoil and controversy throughout the first 14 weeks of the year. Daryl Bevel has taken over as the interim head coach, but I'm still going to go with the Jets. Next, Giants and Eagles, as we also saw this game a couple weeks ago where the Giants won a close one where Jalen Rager had a couple of chances to get the game-winning touchdown, but he dropped two passes on the final drive. But the Eagles, they just need to run the ball, and they will win games. It's that simple. Just run the ball, and they'll win games. Because they didn't run the ball in the beginning of the year, and what happened? They kept losing games. Then what happened when they started running the football? They started to win games. And the Eagles' defense, I think they're going to look like a top-five defense this week against Jake Fromm, who is expected to be the Giants' starting quarterback, where the Giants, they shut down Daniel Jones for the year. Mike Glennon's banged up. So third-string quarterback Jake Fromm. This should be an easy Eagles win, but with the way the NFL is and has been so far this season... There's no such thing as a guaranteed win, but I still think the Eagles win this game with their running game. Led by Miles Sanders, as he was rested up towards the end of that game against the football team in Washington. Eagles win. Tampa Bay and Carolina, and Tampa Bay is coming off of their worst week of the year. Not only do they lose... They lost to the Saints, a NFC South rival. They lost Chris Godwin for the year with a torn ACL. They've lost Leonard Fournette for at least the rest of the regular season. It's unknown if he's going to be out longer than that. Mike Evans is banged up. But the silver lining is Antonio Brown is back this week. Mike Evans, there is a chance that he will be able to play this week. And... Their defense, they only gave up nine points last week, so their defense played really well. It was just their offense couldn't get things going. And I just can't see Tom Brady playing bad back-to-back weeks. For the Panthers, however, they started off the year strong with Sam Darnold. Then Sam Darnold gets injured. Then they sign Cam Newton. Then Cam Newton has a big return game. Then he struggles. The Panthers have struggled ever since. They've lost McCaffrey for the year. Things just keep piling up for the Panthers. And it's possible that Matt Rule is going to be one of those coaches that do get fired on Black Monday at the end of the year. Even if the Panthers were doing good, however, I would still pick Tampa Bay because I just can't see Tom Brady playing bad in back-to-back weeks as this almost does remind me a bit of last season where the Buccaneers, they had a loss and then they rallied together. And that happened again last week. And I truly believe that this was a game, that it was a game last week where they need, they needed to be humbled. I think because a lot of championship contending teams, they always have that one game or two where they, lose when they don't aren't expected to and then they have to be humbled and the Buccaneers they were humbled so I have them winning big I'm going to just skip through the next couple of these here because these are pretty one-sided Chargers Texans I'm going with the Chargers without a doubt 
Justin Herbert is going to throw at least four touchdown passes, maybe even at least five touchdown passes. I don't want to see it personally because I am against him in fantasy this week, but it is going to happen. Justin Herbert will dominate this game against the Texans, no doubt about it. Even though Joey Bosa is out this week, I still think the Chargers defense will dominate against Davis Mills. So I'm going with the Chargers. Next, we have the Bears and Seahawks in a game where I have to pick somebody. And I'm just going to pick the Seahawks because despite them not having a good season at all, I still think they've been the better all-around team this season the Bears have. Despite the Bears having some competitive games this season, believe it or not, the objective for the Bears at this point is to finish the season strong. I think they just got to let Justin Fields loose in these last three games of the year to kind of see what they have to work with. And Matt Nagy might get fired at the end of the year, although I feel like personally it wouldn't be the right decision for the Bears to fire Matt Nagy and just bring in a completely new coach. And I will explain that maybe in the upcoming days. But I'm going to go with Seattle in this one. But this is a battle between two franchises that will in all likelihood experience some big changes in the offseason. Next, we have Pittsburgh and Kansas City. And Kansas City, they are really getting back to their Kansas City ways. Patrick Mahomes completely dominant last week. Tyree Kill dominant. Travis Kelsey dominant. When those three are dominant, the Chiefs are unstoppable. And the Steelers' defense last week, really strong performance. My big question for them, can the Steelers' defense keep Pittsburgh in this game because we do see the Steelers. They play competitive against these strong teams, but against the weaker teams, they just are, are not that good. However, I'm just going to pick Kansas city because they're the hotter team right now. I do like that Steelers defense to keep them in the game for a little while, but we also can't forget before last week against the Chargers, Kansas City's defense was getting better and better each week. And I still think their defense is getting better and better each week. I just think that with last week going up against the Chargers, a really strong offense. I just got to pick Kansas City because they are on a hot streak. Broncos Raiders. Raiders coming off a short week playing on Monday. Well, for the Broncos... Teddy Bridgewater has a concussion, not expected to play this week. So the Broncos will be starting Drew Locke at quarterback. So I think the Broncos are going to rely heavy on the run game in this one with Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams. One of the best one-two punches in the NFL. And I'm curious to see if Javante Williams is going to get some more touches in this game because lately... We've seen Javante Williams get a lot more touches week by week. So now that we're heading towards the end of the year, I wonder if they're just going to let Javante Williams handle the majority of the work with this Broncos running game to kind of see what they have for next season with Melvin Gordon being a free agent this offseason. But I will pick the Raiders in this one, although I do see this being a really low-scoring game because the Broncos' defense... One of the better defenses in the NFL. I feel like we don't really talk about the Broncos' defense that much because of their record right now, but still one of the better ones in the league. And the Raiders' defense, it's a night and day defense. One week they're really good, the next week they struggle. Then they're good, then they struggle. So what Raiders' defense will show up in this game? The Raiders are known for having a second-half collapse, but... I just can't see it against the Broncos. And the last couple of times I've brought this up about their second half collapse, I have still picked them to win and they've won both times. So I'll go to that well a third time. Raiders over the Broncos. 
Sunday night football, Washington and the Cowboys. And Washington is coming off of less rest than anticipated as their game got postponed to Tuesday. So once they hit the field, they will only be on about four days rest, which can be considered normal since we have teams playing on Thursday night almost every week. But it doesn't just feel normal and not really out of the ordinary when it's not expected, when it just creeps up on you towards that last minute. And you got to adapt and adjust. And Washington, they played competitively against the Cowboys the first time they played in Washington. But the Cowboys are a much better team at home. And I'm going to pick the Cowboys to win this one by at least 10 points. Taylor Heineke expected to be back this week for the football team. But I still am going to pick the Cowboys in this one. I am interested to see Terry McLaurin go up against Trevon Diggs. That'll be a fun match to watch, but I'm going to pick the Cowboys to dominate this game. Week 16 wraps up with the Dolphins and the Saints on Monday Night Football. The Saints are coming off of a big win against the Bucks last week. An absolute masterclass by Saints acting head coach Dennis Allen. Shutting out and shutting down the reigning Super Bowl champions. To be a nearly 12-point underdog on the road and pitching a shutout, really impressive. The Saints are my team of the week. The Dolphins, a six-game winning streak, but only one of those opponents has a winning record. So that is something to keep in mind. I anticipate, however, in this game, not many points to be scored. I think this will be a very low-scoring game. I think in the neighborhood of around 17-13. Because both these defenses, I think, are really strong defenses. Despite the Dolphins' defense really struggling at points in the year, I think during this winning streak, we're starting to see the Dolphins' defense starting to reach their full potential. I think the Dolphins' defense can keep keep the Dolphins in the game from start to finish. But in the end, I just think Taysom Hill makes a couple plays towards the end of the game. That is the difference. So I think the Saints win that one in a low-scoring game, 17-13. So those are my Week 16 predictions. For review, I have the 49ers, Packers, Colts, Falcons, Bengals, Rams, Bills, Jets, Eagles, Buccaneers, Chargers, Seahawks, Chiefs, Raiders, Cowboys, and Saints all winning this week. Like, share, and subscribe. Comment your picks down below. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Have a great Christmas and talk to you next time.